What is going on YouTube? Just helping you out here. And for today's video, I will be doing Chapter 2, Problem 18 in the Fundamentals of Physics 10th Edition textbook by Gerald Walker, Halliday, and Resnick. Chapter 2 is all about motion along a straight line, and in Problem 18, we're given the position equation for a particle and asked a series of questions about its velocity, acceleration, and a few other things. And so for Part A, we are asked to find the position at t equals 3 seconds. So we're given the position equation, which is x equals 12t squared minus 2t to the third. And so we need to evaluate x at t equals 3. So x of t equals 3 is equal to 12 times 3 squared minus 2 times 3 to the third. And if you plug that into your calculator, you will find that this is equal to... 54 meters. And that's all you have to do for part A. Now for part B, you need to find the velocity at t is equal to 3. And so we know that velocity is equal to the derivative of our displacement with respect to t, which is equal to the derivative of 12t squared minus 2t to the third with respect to t. And that's going to be equal to 24t minus 6t squared. And now we can do a similar plug-in like we did up here. So the velocity at t is equal to 3 is equal to 24 times 3 minus 6 times 3 squared. And if you plug that into your calculator, you'll find that the velocity at time t equals to 3 seconds is equal to 18 meters per second. And now for part c, we're going to do something similar to what we did in part b. Acceleration is equal to the derivative of velocity with respect to time, which is equal to the derivative of the velocity equation we found right here, which is 24t minus 6t squared. All that with respect to t, and that'll be equal to 24 minus 12t. And again, a at t is equal to 3 is going to be equal to 24 minus 12 times 3, and that'll be equal to negative 12 meters per second squared. And that'll be your final answer for part C. Now for part D, we are asked to find the maximum positive coordinate that the particle reaches. And in order to find a maximum or a minimum, you have to take the derivative and set it equal to 0. So we're going to take the derivative of position with respect to time and set that equal to 0. But we also know that dx dt is equal to velocity. So what we can do is we can take the velocity equation we found up here and set that equal to 0. So we'll say 0 is equal to 24t minus 6t squared. And I'm going to subtract 24t from both sides. So we're going to have negative 24t is equal to negative 6t squared. We can cancel out a t on both sides, we can cancel out the negative on both sides, and we can divide both sides by 6. And if we do that, we're going to find that 4 is equal to t. And so since we're trying to find the maximum x-coordinate reached, we're going to take that time and plug it into our position equation up here. And so that's going to give us x at t is equal to 4 is equal to 12 times 4 squared minus 2 times 4 cubed. And if you plug that into your calculator, you will find that this is equal to 64 meters. And that is your final answer for part D. And now for part E, we are asked to find at what time that occurs, which is actually kind of weird they did it in that order for parts, because we had to find that before we found our maximum position. And so for part E, which we just found right here, time is equal to 4 seconds. And now for part F, we are asked to find what the maximum positive velocity is that the particle achieves. And so that's going to be a similar calculation to what we just did in part D. Again, we are looking for a maximum, so we need to take the derivative of velocity with respect to time and set it equal to zero. And so for part F, we're going to have dv dt, which is equal to your acceleration, is equal to zero. And we found our acceleration equation right here. And so we'll do the same thing we did in part D. We'll set that equal to zero and solve for our time. So this right here is equal to 24 minus 12t. 
And what I'll do is I'll add 12t to both sides. So we'll get 12t is equal to 24. And now if we divide both sides by 12, we'll find that our maximum velocity occurs at t is equal to two seconds. And now I'm out of space on this piece of paper, so I'm gonna get another piece of paper. Okay, so now we're trying to find the maximum velocity. So we're gonna take this time that we just found and plug it into our velocity equation. And so velocity at time t equals two is equal to 24 times two minus six times two squared. And if you plug that into your calculator, you will find that the maximum velocity achieved by our particle is equal to 24 meters per second. And now again for part G, we have a similar mix up like we did for parts D and E. We actually had to find them time right here in order to solve for part F. And so that's gonna be our final answer for part G. Time is equal to two seconds. And now for part h, we are asked to find the acceleration of the particle when it is no longer moving. And what that means is when our velocity is equal to zero. And now if you recall, in part d, we found the time at which our velocity is equal to zero. That was at time t equals to four seconds. So we just need to find our acceleration at that time. We found our acceleration equation right here. And so we can just evaluate this equation at time equals four. And that'll be our acceleration when our velocity is equal to zero. And so for part h, the acceleration at time is equal to four, is equal to 24 minus 12 times four. And if you plug that into your calculator, you will find that that acceleration is equal to negative 24 meters per second squared. And for part i, we are asked to find the average velocity of the particle between times t equals zero and t equals three. And so for part i, what we'll say is that time one is equal to zero seconds and time two is equal to three seconds. And our average velocity is equal to position two minus position one over time two minus time one. And so in order to find x2 and x1, x2 is equal to our position evaluated at t2 and x1 is equal to our position evaluated at t1. And we have our position equation right here, which was given to us in the problem, so we can plug those right in. x2 is equal to 12 times three squared minus two times three to the third. This is the same exact calculation we actually did do in part A, and that is equal to 54 meters. And now we need to do the same calculation for t1. So x1 is equal to 12 times zero squared minus two times zero to the third. And since these are both zero, this entire term will actually end up being zero, and that'll be zero meters. So now we have x2, x1, t2, and t1, and so we can find our average velocity. V average is equal to x2, which is 54 meters minus x1, which is zero meters, over t2, which is three seconds, minus t1, which is zero seconds. And if you plug that into your calculator, you will find that our average velocity is equal to 18 meters per second. And that is your final answer for part i. And so that's about it for this problem. If you found this video helpful, please drop a like, leave a comment if you have any questions or an idea for a future video. And lastly, please don't forget to subscribe and tell your friends about my channel so I can grow and help more of you guys out. I'm just helping you out. See you in the next video.